All right. All right. Well, Blunt the Church, I'm back. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I want to speak to you for a minute on the subject, Christ, our example, our inspiration, and call to action. I'm going to read a scripture, and then I'm going to leave it cooking there for a minute in our minds, and then uh, down the road, I'm going to come back to it. It's Acts chapter 1, verse 1, 2, and 3. Thank you for your prayers for Iglesia Triunfo. Iglesia Triunfo, Triunfo is doing good. Amen. We're reaching out to our community, to the Latino community of the city, and we are so thankful for the opportunity that God has given us. I got a good team. To God be the glory. Amen. Things are coming together. It's looking good. Amen. Looking good. So I'm here with you this morning. They're taking care of it over there. So praise God. Hey, if you're ever brave enough to cross the highway, <laughs> stop by and see me. <laughs> All right? 5701 West 34. Amen. The former account I made, O Theophilus, is Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Yeah. Notice that Jesus taught some things. Teaching stuff and doing stuff. Yeah. Amen. Until the day in which he was taken up, after, highlight this, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles. So he teaches, does stuff, before he goes on to the right hand of the Father, he gives his apostles, his followers, some commandments, a commission. Yes. Uh, to whom he, had, uh, whom he had chosen, verse 3, to whom he also presented himself alive. Yeah. Or just in case there was any, why should I keep doing those things? And why should I keep teaching those things? Jesus said, hey, because I'm here. I'm alive. Yeah, I was dead for three days. I'm back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. He is back. He's alive. So, he presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen, seen by them during 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to to the kingdom of God. So I will highlight three humongous lessons for me out of this scripture immediately. Number one, the account of Luke to Theophilus is all about Jesus. Everything written, everything said, every testimony given, he said, hey, I want to tell you the things that Jesus did and the things that he spoke about. His teachings. I want to talk to you about that. I want to give a, a, leave a record with you of the things that Jesus did and the things that Jesus spoke about. So the report is all about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Number two, number two, Luke introduces Jesus, presents Jesus as a man on a mission, a man on fire. Amen. You know, not a, he's not a drifter, not wandering around, not somebody thinking about, oh, should I decide this? What should I do? When should I? No, a man who knew what he was doing, a man in charge. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He knew what he was doing. He knew why he was doing it. He knew how he, he was going to do it. Luke says, this man has a mission. Yes. Yes. And then the third thing that, that I would highlight to you is the fact that Luke believed 
that the things that Jesus taught and did are so important that apparently we're supposed to keep on teaching and keep on doing. Amen. Amen. What do you think about that? Yeah. You know, so, hey, all about Jesus, all about Jesus, the man with the mission, a man in a mission, an example worth emulating, Amen. worth following. Now, here's what I'm going to ask you to uh, file that somewhere in your mind for just a second. Let me take you to the book of Acts and introduce you to this wonderful story of a woman named Tabitha. And hopefully, as I go through the story, you'll see the connection here. Yeah. So Tabitha, uh, according to Acts chapter 9, Verse 36, she was a man that lived in a certain city there. And, but she was full of good works. Listen to this. So she did something and charitable deeds, deeds that she did. So she was, she was a person with a mission. And she was one of those that apparently believed Jesus did important things and taught important things, so she emulated that. Right. Right. So this is the thing. Although you may live a normal, whatever normal is for you, lifespan, when the time comes for us to go, there will be only a few things that people will remember us yeah. for. Just a few things. Yeah. And those things more likely will be the things that we did the most when we were alive. Yeah. Amen. We are associated with the things we do the most. Mm -hmm. yeah. Easy enough, right? Yeah. So what are the characteristics of our lives? The best that will best and most likely be used to describe us. I'm talking about the things that are consistent in your life. Yeah. What is a constant in you? Yeah. What story is repeating over and over and over and over? Yeah. Because like to Tabitha, people close to you, they won't remember you uh, by your one hit wonder on. or your one huge blunder. Right. Right. They won't. They won't. They will remember you by the general way in which you live your life. Amen. Day to day, again, the things that you are constant at. When I hear the blended church mentioned, these are the things that come to my mind. And I wonder, what, is the, what pictures, what images blended church spark in your mind and in your heart? What emotions does it bring to your heart? But when I think blended church, I think of second chance people. I think of a multicultural community, yeah. Yeah. Amen. a uh, come-as-you-are type of faith community. Yeah. But also, I think of missions supported around the world. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I think of thousands, literally thousands of dollars, giving uh, to support ministry projects in foreign countries, foreign countries, and at home. Yes. Amen. Yes. As a church planter, I will tell you that I think, I remember of the amazing church planting efforts of the blended church. Yeah. Yeah. As a pastor who loves pouring and sharing 
my ministry experiences with others, I can tell you that Blended Church sparks in me images of pastors and preachers and Bible teachers and church leaders being trained and encouraged around the world. Here at Blended Church, we simply don't live and give for ourselves. Are you there with me, Mr. Computer Man? <laughs> we live and we give for others. Yeah. Right. Amen. We understand that. We believe that. Yeah. That makes us about Jesus. That makes us people with a mission. Amen. That makes us people that believe that what Jesus taught and what Jesus did is so important that we must continue with a legacy. Amen. 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 People's lives are being impacted and changed by what we do, both as individuals and as a church. Someone said that it's easier to make a buck than to make a difference. And I want to agree. Yeah. Yeah. Easier to make a living than to make a difference. Here at the Blended Church, we are in the make a difference business. Yeah. We want to see lives change. Yeah. We want to see people souls saved. Amen. We want to be... To, uh, 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 a tool that God uses to bring healing and restoration to our communities, to our cities, to our country, to our world. Yeah. Yeah. Here at the Blended Church, we don't give for ourselves. We don't live for ourselves. We give and we live for others. Amen. Yes. Yes. How significant is this? Jesus says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, I'm telling you, if you did it to the last, to the least of these, you did it to me. Come on. Yeah. No, I'm my own version right here. Paraphrasing. Yeah. He's saying, you did it to them, you did it to me. Yeah. You didn't do it for them. Come on. Yeah. Don't come out here Sunday morning and say, Love is a banner. Yeah, yeah. You did it for them, you did it for me. You don't do it for them, you don't do it for me. Oh. What did Tabitha did? Yeah. Her trade was sewing. And it was so important for her to continue with the works, with the things that Jesus did and the things that Jesus taught yeah. that he gave his life to show her community her faith in a practical way. Amen. How? Sewing clothes for them. Amen. Making shirts and t-shirts and shorts and blankets and, you know, whatever. Her trade was sewing and she used sewing to speak about the things of the kingdom. My goodness, yeah. Amen. my goodness. What we do says more than what we say. Come on. Good, Saying is voicing an opinion. Yeah. Come on. And you have the right to do it. But doing carries an impact, yeah. an experience, an efficiency. Saying is wonderful. Doing is better. It's not what we say. It's what we do that counts. Thank you, Lord. Mr. Computer Man. Yeah. It's not what he said. It's what he's done that counts. Amen. Luke 7, 22. Go and tell, this is Jesus. This is our Savior. This is the man with a vision. This is the teacher. This is the doer. He says, Go tell John the things that you have seen and the things that you have heard. Amen. All right. So there's some wonderful teachings, 
wonderful essence, but then, then some works being manifested here. And these are the blind see. I don't know about you, but once I was blind, Amen. and now I see. Amen. Yes. As we sing, you deserve it, you deserve it. I was remembering the times when I bowed and leaned and bent my knee before strange gods with mouth that couldn't speak, eyes that couldn't see me, ears that couldn't hear my prayers. And this morning, I get to speak to the only true amazing God and say, you deserve my attention and my strength and the rest of my life and the glory. Amen. My goodness. Amen. Woo. Thank you. Woo. The blind see, the lame walks, the lepers are clean, the deaf hear, the dead are coming back to life. To the poor, the gospel has been preached. Go tell him the things that you have heard and the things that you have seen. What was Tavita doing? She was sewing. She was a hard-working woman. She was an industrious woman. She learned. She put it together. Hey, what I do counts. Amen. What I do gives a witness. What I do is a strong sermon in itself. What I do carries an impact. What I do carries a witness. Amen. Industrious woman. She's shown compassion, charity, selflessness. Grace, and you know what was your motivation? To build God's kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To tell somebody about Jesus' love. To bring somebody to the knowledge of the gospel. Amen. Blended Amen. Church, I want to present a challenge to you for this week and for this year. Yeah. This is the challenge. Use the skills you develop to bring God's kingdom into your community. Yes. How about that for a challenge? Yes. What do you do? Whatever you do, consecrate it to Christ. Yes. Give it to Jesus. Amen. And say, Lord, give me opportunities to use my talent, my industry, my gift. So that others may see that you love them, that you care for them. That you want to save them. All right, Pastor, but that's too general. What about specific examples? All right, how about cooking or baking for the healthy ones? A meal for your neighbor who is sick or is disabled. How about that? You know how to cook? Maybe your neighbor needs a meal. This may be next step. And I might be overreaching with this, but how about helping a friend organize, organize his garage? Maybe not. Maybe again. Maybe that's the next step. But what about, how about helping someone fill a job application? How about helping someone do a resume? How about leading someone through a job interview? How about just telling someone how to present himself and to carry himself so that he may be successful or effective in whatever he's doing? Are you following me? Yeah. Yeah. How about using your skill, the skill that you have developed by God's grace to bring God's kingdom into your community? Amen. Whatever we do, we must make carrying a habit. And stay faithful in serving others. Yes. This is what Paul says, 2 Thessalonians 3. Uh, whatever, whatever you do, hermanos, don't grow weary. Don't get tired Amen. of doing good. Amen. Don't get tired of being good. Amen. And listen, I understand that for some of us, next weekend might just be in the 500 weekend. You know, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm just going to go, and I'm just going to go 
Yeah, because for us of us who live in Speedway, man, he's been in the 500 month. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm just going to go and take care of that. And, and, and la, la. But for others, for others, I feel in my heart, there is a deeper, much deeper call. Amen. And this may be God calling on you. God might be saying, it is time to make a life adjustment and consecrate your time and your leadership uh, talent to the work of the Lord. You, You have to answer that question for yourself. Maybe it is time as you go to make use of whatever talent you have as a platform to preach the gospel and to tell others about Jesus. Yeah. Amen. I heard and I know of a bunch of people who go and teach English in uh, foreign nations. Because it's not just a profession for them. It's not a career advancement that they are after. They want to be in the midst of the mission field. Yeah. They want to be out there where the need is, where sinners are. They want to be out there where Jesus is needed. And they are just using teaching English as a platform to bring the kingdom of God into the midst of those people. It was in Antioch where believers were called Christians for the first time. Christian means like Christ. Or Christ-like. Just that. So if you are like Christ, go back to Acts chapter 1, verse 1. If you are like Christ, then say the things that he say. Teach the things that he teaches. Do the things that that he did and that he continues to do. Be all about Jesus. Let Jesus be the star. Let Jesus be the one who is exalted and made known about the nations of the earth. Let Jesus be Lord in your life. Amen. 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 If we are like Christ, then let's be people on a mission. Let's stop drifting about and being moved by whatever comes our way. Let's be people on a mission. Amen. Yes. Amen. We know what we must need to, uh, what, what we must know, and, and, and we need to do what He has ordered us to. So let's be people on a mission. Let's embrace the commandments and the commission that He's given us and build His kingdom for His glory. How did Tabitha became a believer of such an impact in her time? How did she accomplish such an amazing task? Here it goes. Because her, as others, they saw the life of Christ as a model for the lives. Thank you, Mr. Computerman. All right. They saw the life of Christ as a model for their lives. Today, we must challenge our understanding of what it means to follow Christ. We must live by his example. Christ must be the one we look to as we go through this life. Right? Who do you want to look like? Who's defining the pattern of your lives? The patterns of your life? Whose example are you following? Whose teachings are you? Are you listening to? Whose works are you emulating? 
Christ must be the model of, of what God wants for us and what he has for us. Amen. You know what Acts 10.38 says? Listen to this. This blows me away. How God anointed Jesus yeah. with the Holy Ghost and power Amen. and went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Amen. So get this. God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and Jesus did good and brought healing to his time, Amen. to the world. Right? Amen. You know what else? Now God has anointed us with the same Holy Spirit with the same Holy Ghost, which means we can go about doing good things. Amen. And also being a source of healing yes. for our community and for our city. Amen. Yes or no yes? yes? I believe yes. yes. So I want to leave this with you. One, one, if you are all about Jesus... Follow his example. Amen. Follow his example. Two, be inspired. Amen. And three, get to it. Move to action. Amen. The life that Jesus lived brings us a greater or should bring a greater understanding of our life and our ministry as a church. Yes. That's beyond religion, beyond ritual, beyond tradition, beyond formality. Amen. His example is like a peek into a fuller life that should be ours. A brighter hope, a deeper love, and a stronger faith. Yes, I took time to think and to write this. Amen. How about that? Fuller, brighter, deeper, stronger. Glory to God. Amen. Man, yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Since in the beginning, God's image in humanity has been the, the identifier, has been the identifier, the difference maker between human beings and the rest of creation. Amen. Wonderful sunsets. But nothing like looking into your eyes, baby. Uh-oh. Beautiful sunset, but nothing like looking into your eyes, right? All right. Beautiful mornings. Strong winds and storms, but nothing like you. Amen. But this is the thing. Now, because of sin and its consequences, manifested through culture, tradition, and religion, Listen to me because I'm, I'm, I'm just going to say it once. We have adopted a confused, a confused and distorted version of God's image. Amen. Come on. Come on. Preach it. We, instead of believing that, our, that we have been made in God's image, now we're making God into our image. And that is why Jesus came. Listen. Jesus came to reveal God's image, you know, to restore, to make whole again God's image in us. That's why Colossians says that Christ in us is the hope of glory. In John chapter 14, Jesus and his disciples are having a conversation. He's there. Uh, you can read it in, in your time. But Philip said, Lord, just show us the Father. That's enough. And, and, and Jesus said, are you kidding me? I've been with you for so long, and, 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 you, and you don't know me? Right. Amen. Come on. What do you mean you haven't seen him? If you have seen me, you have seen him. Yeah. Right. And then he says in verse 10, the Father, the words that I speak, I don't speak it on my own authority. Right. Are you kidding me? I'm not here teaching my own stuff. I'm not out there just doing my own life and doing my own thing. I, the Father who dwells in me, does the works. 
In other words, are his words coming out of my mouth, his words coming out of my hands and out of my life. And he said, if it is hard for you to believe the things I say, then believe the things I do. Follow Jesus. He is your example. Look on, unto him and pattern your life after his. Yeah. Let me give you some practical examples. Jesus never placed himself on a, in a position above others. How about starting right there? Amen. He led by serving. Amen. You know how he shown his love? By serving. Doing things like helping others, washing feet, uh, feeding thousands of people, walking and traveling and going and and healing the sick and raising the dead, stopping to help others in a state of distress or loss, spending time with people who did have no one to care for them. He touched the lepers. He stopped and looked at that woman who was sick. Remember? Let him be your example. This is the lesson. Jesus has revealed to us the heart of God. Jesus is giving us example an example that we must follow. But serving others is more than keeping a to-do list. Yeah. Serving others mean, means truly caring for people. Yeah. Come on. And I stop right here for a second to ask, how much do you care for people? How much do we care for people? Good, you, know how much, you know how we're going to know? As we get out of, out of service, you get to the traffic jam of... 21st, Crawfordsville, 10th Street. My gosh, 10th Street. It ne- that, that, that light's never green for me. Never. Never. I'm telling you, 12 years in Indianapolis, never. Never. If I'm going to go 10th Street and Country Club, I know I'm going to have to stop. I never get a green light. How much do we care about people? Being servants, being Christ-like means opening our eyes, our hearts, and our schedules for divine appointments. I wish I could stress, I wish I could just explain this so clearly that I would stay forever in your hearts. Listen. We need to recover our sensitivity and be quick to follow his promptings to serve, to love, to help. Amen. Amen. I pray that we break free out of the stress of time and the stress of what others think of us or of the stress of the list of things that we must accomplish today. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Especially here at home. I believe, I believe that God has made us, if we follow Jesus' example, He has made us not only providers, but we can have a list of volunteers to teach children church, to take care of the buildings of the property, uh, to, to, to do ministry, was so long that Pastor Mark and those in charge would be saying like, uh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, uh, uh, we need to expand, we need to expand another service or something. Yeah. Yeah. Should not be a struggle to have volunteers or to have resources. Yeah. Do we care about people? Let's follow Jesus' example and then be inspired. Be inspired. My goodness. Don't be a. Oh. What is our inspiration? Our inspiration is Jesus' life. Thank you. Do I? Jesus' life. Jesus' death. And Jesus' resurrection. One of the greatest testimonies, witness that I have heard from our pastor is this. I know Jesus is alive. 
I know he's alive. Yeah. I know he's, and if you ask him why, then he will go into a litany of stories of, of how he has seen God shown his love, his mercy, his power, not only to him, but to his family. Yeah. This is the lesson. Jesus not only died for us, Jesus is alive for us. Yes. So be inspired by that. When he, did, when, when he was here on earth, he did the Father's will. He preached, he teach, he, obey, he worked miracles. He obeyed the law, fulfilled all righteousness. Him being the second Adam came to succeed where the first Adam fell. You know why? So that he could impute or deposit into your account yeah. righteousness yeah. and holiness. Yeah. Are you, are you, do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm saying Jesus is alive. Yeah. And because he is alive, First Peter chapter 1 says, he has, I love these expressions. I don't know why it sounds so beautiful to me. Has begotten us again to a living hope. Begotten us again. And then verse 4 says, To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. I love it. Then in verse 5 says, Who are kept by the power of God. Again, be inspired. Not only by Jesus' death, but be inspired by his life. We simply like Jesus don't live and give for ourselves. We give and live for others. Amen. Jesus said, because I live, you will live also. Amen. His life work continues. His work, his teachings must continue. But you know, we turn them into rituals. We turn them into ordinances. We turn them into forms, into rites, into sacraments of, ser- of servants. Well, I had to learn that. All right, thank you. But we know that he's much more than that. He is God Almighty. He is the Son of God. He is the Son of Man. Hebrews chapter 10 says, Jesus saying, hey, I know you don't want sacrifice and offering you don't desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And he's speaking about Jesus' incarnation. God incarnating, turning into a man. Coming here to die and to show us God's glory. Right? And then he said in verse 7, I said, I come as is written of me in your book. Is I come to do your will of God. All right. But now, after his resurrection from the dead and his ascension back to heaven, you know who is the body of Christ? Amen. You. You. You are. We are. So now, because of the new birth, we display the character, the character, the character traits of Jesus. Let me say this carefully. Every bit of us is every bit of him. And every bit of him is is every bit of us. Therefore, Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Therefore, as elected of God, holy and beloved, put on, listen to these, tender mercies, character traits, kindness, Humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another, right? His life flows through us. Be inspired not only by his dead. Be inspired by his life. You don't serve a dead Christ, a dead God. Our Savior lives forevermore to him the glory. Amen. Amen. John chapter 14, verse 18. I will not leave you all orphans. Speaking of the Holy Spirit, I will come to you. And then he says in verse 19, a little longer the world won't see me, but you will. Why? Because I live, says Jesus. Because I'm alive. You will be alive also. We are talking about continuing Jesus' life and ministry through the church. Let's get with it. 
Let's be inspired to action, move to action. The same way that God sent Jesus, Jesus has sent you Amen. and I. John chapter 20, Jesus said, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. First John chapter 4, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. And then he says, because as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. Jesus stood in place of us. Now we stand in place of Jesus. If you understand what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah. we don't save no one, but we are his ambassadors. We speak in his name. And our life is a reflection of his character and his purpose and his will for the whole world. Amen. This is what I want to leave in your heart, in your mind. This is what I want you to take home. Maybe you're struggling with uh, the, the circumstances you're going through and and, and, and the way life is being with you, you struggle. And you need God to change your heart. Maybe you don't see yourself at the light of this word. So, oh, I, I, I could never be Tabitha. I could never, I could never be, uh, I could never do that. I could never, I could never. Well, before we make any decisions, how about praying? Yeah. And just saying, Lord... Here's my heart. This is how I think. This is how I feel. How about allowing God to stretch the way we think? Challenge our faith a little bit and change our hearts. This might be confront, uh, confront, uh, confrontational to, to, to some of the ways that we are used to do things. Some of the beliefs that we have and the feelings we embrace. But God can change our hearts. God can soften the ages. And He can teach us kindness and compassion towards others all over again. Yeah. You feel kind of lost. You don't know what's going on, where you're going, what's happening. Hey, Allow God to move you back into position. Right. Amen. And just shift around the way you've been living your life. Allow Him to change your heart. Full of drama, full of this, that, and that, and this happening, this happening. Hey, why don't we make it about Jesus? Amen. Right? Let's make it about Jesus. This is what He's teaching me. This is what He's doing. This is what He's speaking. This is how He's moving. And it is so important to me. It is so important that I must continue that legacy, that work. How about allowing God to change our schedules? I pray that every one of us will embrace being led by the Holy Spirit again. Now, I'm, I'm not advocating here for anyone to go crazy. Uh-uh. Keep your job. Stay in your house with your husband and your wife. Keep supporting your kids. You know what I'm saying? But hey, just allow God, the Holy Spirit, to say, son, this is what is of most important to me. Amen. That can wait. This needs to be taken care of right now. Son, he, her, they need a word. They need prayer. They need an, an encouragement. Allow God to guide you and Embrace the divine appointments 
that he works out for you. Amen. And learn to yield. Learn to yield. After you. Go on. It's okay. It's only time, right? Father God, I thank you this morning. We need your help. We need your strength. We need your inspiration. We need you, Holy Spirit, to move in our minds and in our lives. Because it's not only about saying, it's about doing. It's about allowing you to shine. Allowing you to be the Lord of our life and of our time. It's about making our life story about you, oh God, you, only you. It's all about Jesus. Father, I pray, change our hearts. Change our hearts and readjust our schedule if it needs to be done. Father, you move the pieces however you know our best just help us to be obedient and to be humble and to be submissive 